Let's finish off the question in this video. So recall this is where we stopped. We found out the relationship between labor and capital. Recall that this is our production function. We are looking to find out initially the total cost function so that later on we can find out the long run average cost function. Now what is the total cost function? The cost function depends on the output. It is a function of Q. So what we're looking for is to express labor and capital in terms of quantity. Now how are we going to do so? We're going to use the substitution method. So we're going to substitute the 4 times L instead of K. So we can substitute 4L over here and we're going to have a relationship between quantity and labor only. And from there on we'll see what we're going to do. So we have Q equals to 2 times 4L to the power 0 0.5. 4L to the power 0 0.5 times L to the power of 0 0.5. We're going to use some properties of exponents. So 2 times 4 to the power 0 0.5 multiplied with L to the power 0 0.5. So we're raising each term to the same power times L to the power 0 0.5. Now we can work out the math because 2 times 4 to the power 0 0.5 is the same as square root of 4 and that's going to be just 2 multiplied with L to the power of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 that's just 1. So in other words we're having 4L. Quantity equals to 4L. So if quantity equals to 4L we could write L we could write that L is a function of Q divided by 4. So that's just for the labor. Now how can we express capital in terms of quantity? Well we know that 4L equals to K, so 4 times L is going to equal to K. And if we express now L in terms of quantity as we just did, we'll have 4 times Q over 4 is equal to K. If we work out the math a bit and we cancel out 4 by 4, we can see that capital is going to be equal to Q. Now with this in mind, with these two relationships in mind, we can find out our total cost function. So we're getting closer to what we need. Total cost function, total cost function is the sum of the cost of labor which is the wage times the labor we hire plus the sum plus the cost on the capital which is the interest that we pay for the capital and now as we said that the total cost must be a function of quantity well we're gonna get it because the wage we know that was equal to 4 the labor is equal to q over 4 so we can see that we have the expression in terms of quantity the interest is 1 and the capital was equal to q now, if we cancel out some terms over here, 4 and 4, we have that the total cost function is equal to Q plus Q, which is equal to 2Q. So this is just the total cost function. And now we can find out the long run average cost, the long run average cost, which is equal to 2Q divided by the quantity. We're spreading the total cost over all the units that we produce. So that's just equal to 2. And we can see that the long run average cost is going to be just a flat line at the value of 2. And that's going to answer the question. The supply curve in the long run is going to be a flat line at the value of 2. We usually would have had a curve, so something quadratic, and the minimum value would have been uh, a certain number. But now it's just going to be a flat line at the, at the point of 2. Hope this makes sense, and we are done.